This is going to be critical for everything else going forward. I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. Congratulations on completing the first 10 videos in the AZ-140 study guide. You now have all of the foundational knowledge that you need for the rest of this series as we're going to implement everything that you've learned. Now you're gonna wanna watch this video all the way through to the end because I've got things that I'll be giving you that are gonna set you up for the rest of the videos in this series. But for us to work together in the rest of these videos, we need a scenario. You are the WVD consultant, and the customer who has hired you is a global company who has 30,000 users around the world, and they wanna start with a very sizable proof of concept for Windows Virtual Desktop, supporting 5,000 users in three different regions. Now, for some of you and what you're doing in your environments today, this may seem like a lot, but the principles you learned here are going to make you experts in your smaller environments. We have developers who are located in Japan. We also have people who work remotely in the field who are located in the UK. And then we have general office workers who are in the US. Now, some of our users are in our global offices located in the United States, Japan, and the United Kingdom. And of course, due to the pandemic, we have plenty of people who are still working from home. So we'll have our client VPN for all of them. And then we'll have other people in the field who are connecting over the public internet. So security is going to be a big concern for us. We need everything as locked down as possible. And we also have bring your own device policies in the company that we have to deal with. This is not mandatory. Some of the users get corporate issued devices and others choose to bring their own. So we'll need WVD to work across every platform. And since we have a global company here, they have a follow the sun business model. So we'll have about one third of our users online at any one time. So capacity planning will be critical as well as controlling cost. Now your customer does have several applications that they need to support for all of their different kinds of users. And they're gonna need some help figuring out which apps they should include inside their image and which ones they should package and deploy separately. Now the list of apps for the POC is relatively small it's going to be all of the Office software. So, you know, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, OneDrive, Outlook, Teams, and as well as they support two different web browsers, that would be Edge and Chrome. And then those extra apps that they can't live without in the POC are Notepad++, Acrobat Reader, and VS Code for those developers. Now for the operating systems in WVD, you will have three different images you'll have to create, one for Windows 10 Enterprise, Windows 10 multi-session and Windows Server 2019. And these are custom images and the customer is going to need your help here as well because their current imaging process is one that they've been using for a very long time on-prem and they want to modernize it and move it to the cloud. So not only will you have to create their images in the cloud, but also we're going to have to create multiple versions and patch them for ongoing maintenance. Some additional things that we're gonna need as we build out this environment, of course, is going to be WVD monitoring, printing from inside our corporate offices, as well as people's personal computers, security tools like antivirus, anti-malware, oh yeah, and of course, disaster recovery. And we are on a tight timeline for this POC, so everything has to work so that you are ready to go and take the test. And we're gonna need all the automation that you can muster. And the customer is super excited to be working with you as am I for these next several videos. And the scenario that I've just described is linked down below in the video description in that resources section, as well as the next thing that we're gonna talk about, and that is this network architecture. So this is the basic thing that we're going to need to build for the customer. Now, starting way over here, what we've got is our clients, and we do have all of the different WVD clients represented here as well as the rest of this on-prem infrastructure. So the only things that you really need to worry about on-prem is going to be that domain controller and Azure AD Connect, which of course is going to be syncing our identities up to Azure in the cloud. For the POC, we will have a VPN set up. So I've got a site to site and our client VPN here connecting to our virtual network gateway. So the shared services hub is in the East US nearest to the corporate office. And there's a couple different subnets we're gonna have to set up for all of our services, like our gateway, firewall, bastion, and our pair of domain controllers in the cloud. The firewall here can be considered kind of a DMZ as well, so just keep that in mind. And traffic between all the different subnets will be controlled by these network security groups. 
Then we have our peering connections and that's over to where our WVD workloads are. And those are spanning our three different regions of East US, UK South and Japan West. Now the VMs that are listed here, this is not the exact number of virtual machines because I don't know what we're gonna need yet. That's for you to decide. So figure out how are we gonna get the users in the right locations on the right kind of workloads and that'll all be part of our subsequent videos. Now, one other thing to keep in mind here is Azure Files is our current chosen storage to each individual region will be connected by Azure Private Link. So that way that storage is only accessible to those VMs. So we'll be setting up everything with least privilege access security so everything can only communicate with the right things and not anything additional. For example, each one of these different virtual networks are peered only with the hub, not each other. Now remember, these virtual machines will only be accessible to the end users through the WVD service over their WVD clients. And some of those users will be connecting over the client-based VPN others over the internet, and then others through the corporate office connection through the site-to-site -site VPN. And at least for the POC, this will all be in one subscription. And like with any engagement, the diagram here may change over time as you make recommendations back to the customer. So keep an eye out for that. So give yourselves a good pat on the back. You have made it through the planning stages and now we're gonna start implementing from here on out. So everything in our series is right down here in case you missed any of the videos up until now. And the latest video as always is up here at the Azure Academy. Thanks for joining me for this one. Click over to the next one and I'll see you there. Happy learning.